Hello and welcome to an alpha tutorial video. Today we will discuss on how to train LoRa using the newest SDXL model. Koya SS is a known tool useful for training stable diffusion models that does not require large storage space. To use the Koya SS, you need to install locally on your PC or if you don't have a sufficient GPU, I've made a video tutorial before on how to use Koya SS from RunPod. You can check it out first. The image quality of SDXL's LoRa is much better and it doesn't even require longer training or even complicated parameters to achieve satisfactory results, especially on training human face. In this video, I will be using RunPod service to access the Kohya and do training models. RunPod is relatively easy to use and it offers many templates to set up Kohya and also stable diffusion without taking too much time even for beginners. The price offered is competitive as well. Before we start training, I'll explain about LoRa in a concise term. LoRa stands for Lowering Adaptation. It's an extension model that helps you to generate the image of your favorite characters, styles, or objects in stable diffusion. Next, when we want to do the image training, the important thing would be preparing your images to train on the famous term, image datasets. SDXL LoRa has made tremendous improvements that only requires as low as 5 to 15 image to train and achieve good model, but I recommend to use minimum 10 to 15 pictures as it will give the machine much better information of the character and achieve better results. Now I have prepared 15 image of a woman picture to train. Remember that high quality datasets will produce better models. Avoid using blurry, dark lighting, noisy background, and not clear face for the datasets, as it can affect your model a lot. The next step, make sure to resize your pictures to 1024 resolution. First, go to Burmi.net, upload the pictures, type 1024 resolution, and pan the crop area to focus more on the face. Do this for every image. Once you're done, save as zip, and don't forget to extract the zip file inside your computer first. Once our image is ready, let's go to RunPod and use the template from the previous video. First step, we need to upload our dataset into Jupyter. Therefore, connect to port 8888 and I'll make a folder for my dataset over here. Then click inside the folder and upload your whole image inside this folder. Now, before we open our Kohia web, let's access the running script so that whenever Kohia is processing our image, we can easily keep track of the progress bar and if the training stop midway or not. Go to home page, click read me, scroll down until you see logs table, copy the Kohia command, and go back to Jupyter port, go to workspace, open terminal, and type tail stripe f. Then paste the previous command. Now the running script will be shown over here. Next, go back to the home page and connect directly to the 3010 port. This will redirect to the Koya SS GUI without the need to run a script in the Jupyter like other templates, which is very easy. Once we got into Koya SS GUI, go to Utilities tab, Captioning, and select Clip Captioning. In this part, go to the Jupyter, right click the dataset folder, and copy path. This will indicate the folder path which contains the dataset to train. Prefix, just put OHWX woman with comma and click caption image. To see whether it's running or not, go back to Jupyter again and now you can track the progress for captioning. Once it's completed, check the dataset folder and read whether the captions are accurate or not. Sometimes the captions are not sufficient to describe the picture. For example, I will add more words to caption the image so that the machine can understand better. And if there are some objects in the dataset that you don't want to show in the model, you need to caption it as well. An example case, if I don't want my model to only have brown hair, I'll put brown hair in the caption. So this means the machine will not treat the brown hair as part of the model style but rather can be omitted and changed later on during prompting. Once you have finished edit all the captions, we'll start training the image. Go back to the 3010 port, and then open the LoRa tab. 
In the source model, model quick pick, select custom, pre-trained model, go to Jupyter, open the folder where the STXL model is saved, copy the file path, and paste it on Kohya. Then, check the STXL model. Next, go to the dataset preparation tab, instance prom, type OHWX, class prom, type woman, training image, just copy the path file that contains the dataset. Repeat set to 20, can skip the regularization image, then destination training, paste the folder path of the folder that will save the LoRa files. Click prepare training data and then click copy info. So this step is needed to prepare the important folders for LoRa training. It will create three folders. First one is image, this is to save the dataset image. Second is log, this folder to save the log for LoRa training. Third model, this is where your save tensor file will be saved. Now go to the training tab, folder tabs, you will see it's all filled automatically. Just need to rename the model output name. Next, we'll set the parameters for training, and this is part of the crucial step. The first one, LoRa type is standard, train batch size, keep it at 1, epoch put 10, save every epoch. This depends on how many LoRa you want to test, the lowest it can go is 1, and the highest is the same as your epoch number. Basically, if you save every 1 epoch, it will save the model trained every time it finish one epoch, which means you will have 10 LoRa model at the end of the training. And if you put every two epoch, it will save a model once two epoch is finished, which will give you five models at the end to the test. This time for the save every epoch, I'll go with one. Mixed and save precision, select PF16, check cache latents to disk, Scheduler can use constant, optimizer use add a factor. It is the newest optimizer supporting the SDXL model. Learning rate used for A-4 and learning rate warm-up steps just put zero. For the extra argument, just paste this sentence. I'll put it in the description box too. Max resolution put 1024 and 1024 to achieve better results. Enable buckets. Paste the learning rate to text encoder and unit learning rate. Check the know-how VAE, network rank dimension, use 256 since we are training human face. Be aware that network rank affects the file size a lot. Usually 256 will give you size around 1.7 gigabytes. If you want to save storage space, you can put either 32, 64, or 128 as the network rank. In the advanced configuration, check the shuffle captions. If your pod received CUDA out of memory error, then you need to go back to the parameter, select the gradient checkpointing, and retry the training. Once all is done, scroll down and print training command. This will preview the training steps before you start your training. It will give you information on how many steps it will take to train. Next, just click start training. Make sure to track the progress terminal to see if it stopped midway or not. Once the training is done, go to the Jupyter folder where the LoRa model is located and put it into stable diffusion LoRa folder. Better use run podctl send command to send all in one go. Once it moved successfully, go back to the home page, open 3000 port, and let's test our LoRa in the stable diffusion. I'll make an XYZ plot comparison to see which model gives the best result. I'll put the prompts I have prepared beforehand to test whether our LoRa works or not. Since we have several LoRa's, we'll test whether the lower and higher epoch has good results or not using the XYZ plot. Using the XYZ plot makes the processing much faster and easier for a comparison since it will generate a table. And because each epoch will have slight different variation, and it depends on which characteristics that you prefer. Now, once the image is done, let's check each of the epoch comparison. 
If you want to retain the realistic side for your model, you can aim for the higher EPO. But if you want more flexibility for the model, especially to mesh with the illustration type, you can aim for the lower EPO. Remember that you can also experiment with way of the LoRa as well and other rooms for improvements. So that's all for today's video. If you have more questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments below or join our Discord to discuss more. And if you want to see more of our videos, don't forget to like our video and subscribe to our channel. Your support means a lot to us. Until next time.